everyone seems to be talking about the potential and the bright future for autonomous tractors and agriculture. But for me, it's honestly scary. Not because I'm afraid of technology. I love things, all technology. I love becoming more and more efficient on the farm. But it's scary because as a 25-year-old farmer and hearing that John Deere has pledged to have a full fleet of autonomous tractors by the year 2030, it makes me wonder what the future of my farming career looks like. In 2030, that's only five years from where I'm currently sitting. That's only five more years of running the planter across all of our acres, five more years around the sun. And honestly, I think with some of the technology that I've seen, I think by 2030, we'll see a lot of autonomous tractors in agriculture. Now, don't get me wrong. I, as a farmer, love running equipment. It's one of the most fun parts of the job. Take, for example, this four-wheel drive behind me that ran over my family's 2,000-acre farm this past year. On this tractor, we put on 400 hours just over the spring planting season and the fall harvest season. With this tractor running a lot of the tillage tools on the farm and tillage being one of the easiest jobs on the farm because you're not having to worry about seeding, you're not having to worry about unloading with the combine. A lot of our tillage hours, a lot of the 400 hours that were on this machine, a lot of those hours aren't myself or my dad. A lot of those hours we pay someone in town, whether that be a retired person, someone that comes to drive the tractor at night, someone that's not a full-time farmer like us, and they come out, run the equipment, help us out so we can be in other pieces of equipment because this isn't as, as sophisticated of a job, if you'd say. So a lot of those hours, we're already outsourcing to other people to help us. From my farm's perspective, in my opinion, a tractor set up like this four-wheel drive, if it was fully equipped with autonomy and I could still use the same size implement because as autonomy progresses, they are slowly getting to wider and wider implements that you're able to see the cameras from that basically determine if there's any objects with. For us, rather than having to pay someone in town, rather than basically having to retrain someone how to run this tractor every fall and us being able to manage it from either our phone or our desktop, in our perspective, if there was an autonomous package we could put on this, which it sounds like autonomous tillage is the first thing that's coming out in 2026. For us, something like that would make a lot of sense because we're not doing a lot of the tillage ourselves, like I said. A fully autonomous fleet of tractors to me doesn't mean just a tractor pulling a digger or a tillage tool like the one I just showed you, but it could be a tractor pulling something like a planter, pulling a grain cart, pulling a side dress bar, pulling wagons in the field, pulling X, Y, Z. And that's the part that scares me. To understand my perspective, the average person works 40 hours in a week. There's 52 weeks in a year. I figure most people get about two weeks off in a year. So I'm gonna say the average person, based off my estimates, works 2,000 hours per year. As for a farmer on that 2,000 hour perspective, a lot of farmers, including myself, we don't keep track to how many hours of work we do. Some people say that's a good idea because it might be a little bit scary how many hours we do actually work. I don't know, for me, it's part of a lifestyle. Also, I enjoy farming, so it's all not that bad. But as for how many hours we run equipment, I am able to find that information on my computer because all of our tractors are hooked to the internet. So to figure out if my farm fully switched to autonomous tractors, how many more hours we'd save on the farm, we're gonna look up how many hours we put on equipment last year. To find that information, I come into this software of John Deere's called John Deere Operations Center. This is basically my online platform, which consists of all of my fields for my farms, all of my tractors for my farms. But to find out how many hours we have, we will create a report in this software. Here's the report I got created, have the dates. So for our combine, we had a total of 253 hours on it last season, four wheel drive, like I said, 408. Then we have our two two wheel drive tractors. We had 34 hours on the one and 403 hours on the other, leading towards a grand total of 1,316 hours. To me, hearing that 1,316 hours, that's a lot of hours that could be potentially phased out by autonomous tractors. Now, at this point, you might be thinking, Matthias, you're worrying about something that's five years off in the future, something that might not even happen because the grain prices keep going lower and lower. And honestly, I always thought that was the case too. But I recently went to a John Deere meeting and handed out this flyer about the price to put on autonomous package 
of some of the tractors we currently have in the shed. So as far off as I thought some of this stuff was going to be, and I thought the 2030 might have been a little bit of a crazy stretch. Now that I have this sheet and hear that they're actually starting to price and starting to take purchase orders and seeing quotes for it, it's making me realize it's closer in front of my face and in front of our farmers' faces as what some of us thought it was. Now I've kind of had a front row seat with all this autonomous tractor stuff for the last few years. I've actually, we've been a demo farm for John Deere. We are no longer, but we were for three years. We had the autonomous tractor. Here's actually the set of keys out of the autonomous tractor we had at our farm. I keep this in my office just as memorabilia as well as this picture of me in front of the tractor. So I've had a front row seat and I gotta say, with how I thought it was gonna go with that tractor being smaller and it was a smaller tillage tool at the time, I was thinking everything was gonna get smaller. All the implements were gonna get smaller, all the tractors were gonna get smaller, that way the system would work. But my whole perception has changed on this after going to this most recent meeting. Here's the sheet I've been talking about. Like I said, I thought the implements back here were gonna get smaller, but as you can see here, 50 feet, 60 feet, 45, 40, there's gonna be no modifications that are needed. They're also expecting, based off the meeting, to have a fully autonomous planter by the year 2027. And as the meeting then eventually progresses, it leads to Q&A at the end. And at this point, I'm all in. I have a huge sheet of notes that I've been taking, but there's two very important questions that were asked. Two things that I think will get figured out in the next five to 10 years that will determine the future of not only my farm, but the future of a lot of other farms and that will also reshape agriculture a little bit with this technology. Naturally, as you'd expect, the first hand goes up and the first question is, how much is this all gonna cost? And honestly, I was thinking the same thing and the representative first said, he has no idea. The pricing doesn't come out, I believe he said till the middle of the summer. And basically there's gonna be two cost components. Number one, there's gonna be an upfront cost. There's gonna be a cost to add all of the technology to a tractor, all of the hardware, the cameras, all of the controllers that'll be behind the seat to basically process all of what the camera sees. And then the second cost is they're expecting to be a per acre charge. So for every acre that is crossed over with an implement, so in this instance, a tillage tool, again, another tillage tool, whether that be a dollar an acre, $5 an acre, every acre that gets crossed over when no one's in the cab and it's in autonomy mode, there will be essentially a royalty fee that will go to John Deere. Now, I don't like to speculate, but someone asked the question at the meeting, so I will give you my thought process. I currently have a 52 and a half foot field cultivator, sitting right here, and a four wheel drive tractor. I can pay someone in town, those people I was talking about, between 20 and $30 an hour to sit in the cab of that tractor and basically have the tractor drive itself around the field. They just need to monitor things. And this thing can cover 60 acres an hour, which means if John Deere comes out with a licensing fee of a dollar an acre, I will be paying John Deere $60 an hour to run this rig. Now remember, I also said I could pay someone in town up to $30 per hour, and I would still be saving half the money. So right now, depending on what the cost is, to me, at the current thing I'm expecting, it might just be cheaper to keep paying someone in town. But that's where the meeting just started to get fun because that piece of equipment is 52 and a half feet wide. And now over here, we have our ripper, which we use in the fall. We pull this at about four, five miles an hour. It's only 18 foot wide. With this thing, you're lucky to get like 15 acres to the hour. Well now, if they're only charging a dollar an acre, which again, I have no idea. That's just what I'm using for an example. Now I'm only paying John Deere $15 an hour instead of paying a person to sit inside there $30 an hour. So now. Now I don't know what to do because for here, it makes sense to have autonomous, but then over here, it doesn't. Keep this example in mind because if I'm able to run a piece of equipment cheaper than what I'm able to pay someone else, it would only make sense for me to do it autonomously, but keep that thought. Now let's have that same conversation and thought process with the planter. So the planter is one of those $100 an hour jobs that is very important on the farm very much more important than the tillage pass that gets made. So this is one of the jobs that we do ourselves and don't pay someone to run one of our tractors. So it's either dad or myself that's running the planter. But if autonomy gets so good and they become out with technology that they're very confident that it can run the planter, it begs the second question that was asked at the meeting. And that second question was, 
if all the tractors on my farm become fully autonomous, meaning no person is in the cab of the seat and they run themselves, what would I do as a farmer when the machines are running out in the field? And that was the question that sent me home questioning whether farming is a smart choice moving forward. Because as I showed you, as a farmer, I spend about a third of my time, is what I'm estimating, in the seat of a tractor. And if you were to tell me a third of my time is no longer going to be in the cab of a tractor, I don't know what I'm going to do. And if I'm going to be paying a company that can do it for cheaper than myself, I'm going to be able to needing to find something that is going to give me a higher return on investment on my time. If you think I'm talking a little bit crazy, that might be the cocoa puffs I had for breakfast. No, but uh, I bought this globe this spring. I want to show some of the new technologies, new advancements that this is going to allow us to do for planting season this year and how that is eventually going to translate over to full autonomy. So we'll get this thing to use. I made it out with the ranger to our first field that we need to work on today. Here is the field on my phone. These little white little flags are the first thing we are going to get started for for the day. Those white flags on the phone, those are our field driveways that I'm going to be marking here that I'm driving along. So I need to mark those because once we cross into one of the field driveways with the planter, the digger, the combine, the sprayer, anything this spring, it's going to know instantly what guidance line we need, what farm we're in. It's automatically going to fill all that information out in the cab rather than us having to sit there and push them all. So we're going to go ahead and find all the driveways to this field. The only driveway in this field I forgot to mark is right here. So we will drop a little pin right there in the field and you can see it labeled that as a driveway. Both of the field driveways on this farm selected. The next thing I'm gonna do is we're gonna be driving around the complete outside edge of the field and we're gonna be recording with the globe. That's gonna create a nice boundary and then I'll show you what that can do when we get back to the computer, how we'll send that to the planter and how it basically maps out all of the passes I'm gonna make in this field. But first, we gotta drive around the outside. Get our boundary for this field, we will redo our one from last year and we will create a driven boundary, which is also required for autonomy. Now we are recording on the screen, so anywhere I drive now, that is where the edge of the planter will be for this spring. So this is what I've made so far, what the map looks like of the field. But now we're coming up to the most important part. This is the side of the field where there is no fence. It just needs a perfectly straight line from end to end. And the reason I say perfectly straight line is because the line I use on this side of the field is the line I will use to plant every other section of the field. That way I only have what we call point rows or odd rows on one end of the farm. So I'm gonna make a perfectly straight line on this side of the farm by hitting stop and resume here on the screen. Now if I hit resume, but watch this dash line right here, it'll turn solid. And now I have a perfectly straight line from this end of the field down to that grove, which is exactly what I need. I quickly just zipped along this side as well and now have the complete outside border edge of the field. So this pink line, that is the boundary for what we call our Obermiller farm. I will bring this to the computer and then we'll start creating what we need. We'll export the data to the USB that we need. Field, gotta select our Obermiller field. And now it should send everything to that USB and then we'll bring it into the office. Then come back into our Operations Center account and we will upload that file inside here. And then it'll show us a nice little map for that farm that we made. So here is the map that we just made. It tells me on there it's a total of 147 acres. I now just need to make a couple selections here off to the side such as what I want the headlands to look like and then it will create me a map of all the planting passes we're going to make. Here's what I now have created, this red line, that is the outside edge of the field that we just were at and mapped. And all these blue lines inside here run perpendicular, perfectly 60 foot spaced 
with that red line, which is absolutely perfect that those lines are gonna be perfectly perpendicular because I'm gonna have no guess rows on this side of the field because it's gonna be 60 feet, 60 feet, another planter pass, 60 feet, another planter pass, every 60 feet until I get to the other end of the field, which there is no perfectly square field. So there will be a couple guess rows or a couple spots where I'm not always using the full length of the planter, but this should work absolutely perfect when I get to the field. And now when I do get to the field, the planters are gonna have all these lines, gonna need to know exactly where it has to plant. All those guidance lines in my computer, those will then get all sent wirelessly to the cab inside the little display. And then those will all get pulled up right when we pull into all the fields. So that's one big thing that autonomy is already changing with how we run the tractor. And the second one is where I see a lot of potential for what's better than what I can do as a human. And the second big piece of the autonomy package is all those cameras. So all the cameras get mounted up here. There's cameras that get mounted up on the cab that face down. And the big thing that you can gain from the cameras is when I run the tractor through the field, right, I'm looking and I notice anything. Maybe there's a spot in the field where it looks like there's some soil that washed away. Maybe there's a bunch of rocks. Maybe there's a bunch of weeds in this part of the field. Maybe this spot of the field has like some white crust on the top. Those are things I observe. Not very often do I take pictures inside the cab of all the things I'm seeing when I'm looking down at the field. But with the cameras that could potentially be on the tractor, on an autonomous tractor, all of those photos could be logged and stored somewhere digitally. And then eventually AI platforms can go and look at these cameras and see and run thousands of analytics across all of those photos and start to really fine tune different things they're seeing with soil, stand count, emergence on all the crops. And that's where I see a huge advantage of having cameras on a tractor versus the little bit of information I can recall after passing, you know, 50 acres. Automation in farm machinery is definitely a thing that's here to stay and it's only gonna improve and get better. Like the cameras, all those photos they take from the year past, they can then apply those to the next year's AI or the next year's algorithm and improve and improve and improve. So it's only gonna get better and better and better. So it's definitely here to stay. As for what it means for me as a farmer, that's why I said I'm a little bit scary because I don't know what it's gonna look like to be a farmer in five years. I think it's gonna be drastically different. If you wanna see what it's gonna be like, I encourage you to hit subscribe down below, kind of a shameless plug, but hopefully things aren't much different, but who's to say what it's gonna look like? We won't know till we get there. So with that, that's all I got for today's video of High Tech Farmer. Thanks so much everybody for watching. We'll see ya in the next one.